get inside of the app. I'm going to show you some of the features. I'm going to give you a couple of examples of the way that I've practiced with it. I'll give you a couple of examples of the ways that you may try things out. But ultimately, this is a beta test, and we want to get feedback from you. We think of the Harmony Cloud as a tool. It can be used for, heart, for ear training, but it can also be used for a lot of things outside of ear training. Okay, so let's get into it and take a look at the app. Here is an image of our home screen. You'll notice at the top, we have five areas listed. The first one is called Listen and Play. This is an area that we'll circle back to and open up, but it's essentially there for you to experience creating music along with the app. Under that, there's a, an area called Practice. If you're in Listen and Play and you find that there are areas where you're struggling, certain things that you, you're not able to hear, if it's the bass, if it's chord quality, you can go under Practice and practice just the areas that you're struggling with. You don't necessarily have to identify the entire chord. Under that, there's to take the challenge, which should be a lot of fun. This is an area where you don't have a lot of control over the tempo, you can't stop the chords, you can't necessarily go backwards. We're going to control all of that and we're going to put you to the challenge and we're going to give you a score. Under take the challenge, you'll notice that we'll have an area called your progress. So again, as we're asking you to enter answers, we're actually storing not only that you got the answer wrong, but we're going to have a sense of why you got the answer wrong. On the bottom, you'll notice that it says watch and learn. Watch and learn is part of what you're experiencing now. We're going to have a collection of videos which, in which I'll share many teaching techniques, but it won't only be myself. We're going to, we'd like to think of ourselves as a community. We want to have lots of musicians take this tool and come to us and show us how they're using it. So I don't know exactly what other people are going to do. I don't know what you're going to do as a user. We think it's going to be really exciting to have this community area, the watch and learn section, where people are sharing ideas. Okay, so let's circle back to the Listen and Play page and open that up. Okay, now we've opened up the Listen and Play screen. You'll notice that there's a score there with a triad. We have our cloud with a C triad indicated and you have a series of controls, forward, play, reverse, start back over. This little half circle, semicircle over to the right, that's to refresh the chord progression. Once you hit that, you're going to get another unpredictable chord progression based on the chords that you've selected. So one of the first things you want to do when you enter this page is you want to go to the button on the right which is labeled Choose Your Chords and select which chords you want to have play inside the progression. So let's take a look at Choose Your Chords first. So as I mentioned before, there are many ways that you can customize the learning process. And as you look at this long list of triads, you can choose to start in whichever way that you would like. I recommend that you start with the primary palette because it is the most diatonic and it helps to establish the key center. When you have an established key center, everything else that happens takes its emotional characteristic relative to the tonic, to the key of C. So in this case, the C triad, the F triad, and the G triad establish the general foundation of the key center. So what I like to do to start is I would select the cloud. You touch the cloud over to the left, and you'll notice that the R, the 1, and the 2 to the right all light up. These are indicating that you now have C, F, and G triads in root position, first inversion, and in second inversion. Many times, particularly in the world of jazz, we're, we're not used to dealing with inversions. So I actually like to, I like to recommend that people start without inversions. So if you don't want to have the inversions, simply touch the two and the one, and they're gone. So now the app will musically play C, F, and G, in a, in a way that is unpredictable. You don't know the order that is going to occur. The voicing is constantly changing. The melody note is not the same. It's very unpredictable, very logical, very intuitive, and very musical. Okay, so now we're basically all set to hit play and play along with the progression. Let's take a look at what we have here. So we're going to start by taking a quick glance at the setting page. So again, we're going to hit the gear icon at the bottom of that. See what we have in here. So we have a tempo set at 50, which is fine. We have the melody sound turned all the way off, we have the harmony and the bass all the way up, and the rhythm sound turned all the way off. That's fine for right now. We're in the key of C. Right now we have the number of chords selected at 25. Why don't we drop that down to 17? So that essentially we play four measures. So we'll gradually slide it down to 17. I say 17 because it's four measures at 16, but the app will always resolve on the tonic. It'll always go back to 
C if you start in the key of C. So we'll have an additional num additional measure to complete our musical progression. Uh, melody sound, we have that turned off. For our harmony sound, we have a sound called Favorite 5, which is kind of a Fender Road sound with a pad wrapped around it, a very enveloping sound, followed by a, a bold, upright bass. Again, we're looking for sounds that are full, large, and surround you harmonically. Uh, if you scroll down again, we have it the stepwise for us. We, we don't have any of that to select it, so the algorithm will choose to do whatever it wants at this point. Uh, and where it says scale at the very bottom, we have selected quadrats instead of pentatonics or hexatonics, which means on this, the score, we're only going to see four notes, one of which is marked in red. And as I play along, you'll notice that I'll put an accent on that red note. Okay, so we're going to hit the return button at the top left. So now we're all set up and ready to hit the play button. The first thing we want to do is we want to hit that semicircle over there on the bottom right so that we get a brand new progression that's unpredictable. Next, we hit play. Thank you. 